Subscribe to this YouTube channel for more such messages. You can also listen to these messages now on Spotify. Click the link in the description box. Also, if you want to become a member of our channel, click on the Join button and choose your preferred level. God bless you.
that the mother had pawned her wedding ring to keep the boy there. That mother's wedding ring meant just as much to her as my mother, Doug, or my wife, or your wife, means much to her. Maybe her husband might have been dead for all I know. But we managed some way to see that she got repaid for that and her money back. But that night, my little brother brought into the line this boy. He was the most hideous, crippled person that I've seen in many years. His arms were drawn down his legs. He was a very, very much of a sight to look at. Just before he was a little judgment of God. For I'll have to give an account for every word that I every word that I have spoke, I'll have to answer for. But all of a sudden my hand, the one which the gift comes through the vibration, got real hot. And I a little child was some eight, nine years old, maybe not that old. I laid upon a little fire and something just moved downward. And friend, God being my judge that I stand before, the four inches lighting on the child's leg was perfect. She put this Bible on her head and walked up and down before the audience just as perfect as any one could walk like that. She was healed over an hour of prayer for her. The next was this cripple boy. After he'd been prayed for for some 35 or 40 minutes, I could not feel that there was any difference. I'll explain it to you later what I mean by that by feeling. And after a while, the, the liberty came. The power that had him down was gone. The next morning, the boy shaved himself. His hands were drawing down. He couldn't even see himself. He shaved himself, walked into the building, pushed his wheel cart up and down across the course for the first time for 30 some odd years. He used to meet me. He's got a telegram. And tomorrow, he is to meet me at Vancouver to be the first one to greet me and shake my hand, walk out on a field. I had his picture taken walking out to meet me at the plane because of being in his wheelchair for all that time. Of course, God is still God. If I just had the time to tell you the same, but I'm sure that God will make it known unto you in many ways through testimonies and things. I wonder if there's any Canadian friends here, anybody from Canada here, would you just raise your hand? Anyone from Canada? Yes, I see one. What part of Canada, sister? Quebec? Winnipeg? Was you in the Winnipeg meeting? Yes, man. There was also another man at the Winnipeg, one limb about two inches or three inches short and the other who wore a high shoe, one of those big build up shoes. And he bought him a new pair of shoes and brought to the meeting to wear away. And God would, will never disappoint anybody with that kind of faith. He went away with his new shoes on, left his old ones laying on the platform. He was whole, made whole. He's wonderful, isn't he? Now, we don't have uh, so much time in each evening, but we had many evenings to, or afternoons rather, to pray for the sick. And I want you, dear people, if you will, all you people who know Jesus as your Savior or Healer, I want you this coming week to go and pray with all your heart. Now, I have many thousand miles of flying ahead of me. I have going up on the thumb from Vancouver, work down the coast as far as California, coming back to Fresno, where I'm to go tomorrow to the Armenian people. They flew a boy who prays for the sick by the name of Abak. They brought him from Cairo over to pray for a man by the name of Arcadian. The same time they sent for him, they sent up in Indiana and had me to come to a woman with cancer, and both breasts were taken off, and the cancer had gone down into her, her the lung cavity. And three days after the woman was prayed for, she was doing her shopping on the street, and she's perfectly sound and well now with no sign of cancer at all. And it so got the, the Armenian people over there to see that the Lord Jesus was such a great healer. And this people that's calling now is another cancer case. 
which was a frame to the woman. By the way, the lady was just given a few more hours to live by some of the noted specialists of St. Louis where they had flew her there by plane to be operated. But now she's well. It makes me think of that song, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, that would save all we can say heal a wretch like me. Now, this afternoon, how uh, demons that come from the people, to dark into the people's thoughts to sit. But if you be reverent, you shall see the glory of God here in Phoenix. I think now, if you will, let's bow our heads and have just a word of prayer, if you will, everywhere, that all of you here, the children and all, be just as reverent as you can be in living. Jesus. Our Heavenly Father, reckoning from the very heart, to come again into Phoenix, Arizona, coming in the name of our beloved Son, Christ Jesus, coming with God, that they will, beyond any shadow of doubt, be the glory of Almighty God manifested, for the deaf and dumb spirits to leave the people, the blind to leave, the cripples to be set at liberty, when the power of Christ comes down to liberate those who are captured and bound by the powers of Satan. Oh God, I pray thee, every one who has in these churches, the ministers and in all sponsoring this meeting here for the city of Phoenix. Maybe many of the worldly minded people will not understand just what it means. But those who are spiritual and wise shall know what this means. A sign. O oh, Father, I pray thee to manifest thy power. Bless the ones who gave us the right to this auditorium. I pray that you'll be with every one of them, Father. If there be any unsaved among, may they be saved, Father. And may this house that's been used to hear for different speaking. Father, I pray thee just now that thou will sanctify the building for the services of Jesus Christ. And may sinners weep their way to Calvary right here in this building. May sick people be liberated. May demons scream and come out. And may it give this lovely little city the greatest shaking it's ever had. Father, I believe that you have many people here gathering in here in this house we've got in different parts of the world. And I pray, Father, that you will heal them and let them know that there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Oh, God grant it. Let every minister I ask again, Father, that turn their congregation to loose this afternoon to come. I pray that you'll be with all of us. And now, dear God, I thank you for the rest that you have given me up in the mountains. And now coming down with new strength. Oh, Christ, may your gift be more than a match for anything that Satan could lay before us. May the great shaking powers of God loose everything that is unlike God, even to the cold and indifferent hearts of sinful men and women, boys and girls. Help Father, the flames roar across the mountains. I pray that you'll bring me back next Sunday safely to Phoenix again. Father, thou art the captain of our salvation. I pray that you'll help. My blessing this afternoon service. And may every heart here be circumcised. May the ears be circumcised to hear the word of God and circumcise the lips of thy servant to speak that which is right. May great powers be brought forth this afternoon in liberation for the people. And may everyone that comes to the platform come with that one single mind. This is my time, and I shall be liberated if others are so can I. 
And may they not be silent, but in the city, walk the streets and testify this next week, giving praise and glory to God, and may it start even the merchants and all. Not until there's a great awakening here, they might know that the Spirit of God still has preeminence anywhere. You can hear things in darkest places and pull those out for a crime. Just an analysis, to make an estimation now, that since I was a thief, there has been at least, I'd say, well, I'd say 25 or 35,000 people prayed for, maybe more than that, and there's been at least 10,000 of them healed. Would you think of that? Such as cancers that are lame at their last moment are well people since the last thief. I guess in the, in the the provinces of Canada alone, there was at least 250 or maybe more than that cases of cross-eyed people with their eyes straight. And mute, it's innumerable to count them. For there was multiplied scores of them that came that were some deaf, dumb, some hard hearing and everything that were made perfectly whole. Now that's only done through the visitation of the angels. A few nights ago, standing at home, when I came in home from Canada, I couldn't arrive at my house for five days. The people were laying so deep at the place that they kept me out for five days. A few days ago, the people would come up and they would have someone there to turn them away, coming from all parts of the nation. And their night, last Sunday morning, my little church asked if I would come by and have teach to them on the book of Revelation. I did. Then at the end, the associate pastor said, Now, Brother Branham is not praying for sick because he's waiting and holding his strength to arrive at peace. And so he said, Don't, no one, ask for prayer. But I stood to shake their hands at 11 o'clock and 2 o'clock they got me away from the place. And I had on a watch and I took hold of a woman there first that had a tumor and the tumor stopped, the vibration stopped my watch. I can't tell you people with a watch on. I can show it to you this afternoon. It'll stop it every time, vibration, or that brand new long jean watch. But it'll stop, the, the vibration will stop it. And I showed a minister from Euphorine. He's here in the audience this afternoon somewhere. And he, it, it stopped, the vibration stopped it. Then Sunday night, when it was over to have just a sermon for them, why, there were some people formed a prayer line, and I asked them if I'd stand and pray for them in mass form, if they would believe. And they said they did. Then they, bless their hearts, they, they wanted to shake my hand or something, you know, to get close. And they all passed by shaking hands. And then some of the people that had been here with cancer and tuberculosis and so forth, they were standing, wanted to be seen. Some people that I have told you about of the field, they were standing up and... I, while standing there, I felt the presence of this angel come near. Looking out over the audience, I felt the lady that he was calling for. I see she'd been in the prayer line. God knows I didn't know what was wrong with the lady. And I said, come here, you. And she just sat and looked at me. I said, you there. And the lady said, you mean this lady here? And I said, yes. Yeah. said, well, she's dead. And I said, well, if Rain was here, this is the time she's to be healed. I see, that has to come from God. I said, how long has she been there? I said, her sister's somewhere in the building. And there was just about as many people in the building as there is in the center aisle, I guess, as all could get in on the outside. And the lady came up, and she said, her sister said she's been deaf all of her life, practically, since she was a child, anyhow, around 12 years old. Well, as soon as I took over her hand there, showed when her screen for my she was in the right hand. Then on the left hand, showed vibration. In a few moments, the death spirit was cast from the lady, and she was looking. I snapped my finger. She turned and looked. I said, you hear me, don't you? And her hearing was perfect. And she began crying, very uh, uh, fine-dressed lady. She began crying with her hands up in the air. And the people began to run around. Then they got me out through the back way. Because, you see, friends, I can only, I am just a human. I'm just a man. But it has to come from Almighty God, you see. Did you notice the master, he would go into the city and maybe perform one miracle and then leave the city. Did you notice that? Many times like that. Wasn't there many lepers in the days of, of Elisha? 
but only one was sent to him, that was Naaman, is that true? Or tell how many more lepers came, but one was sent to him, and that was the one the Lord had intended. And the only way that I can tell is when I feel that something from the person that gives me the access to this supernatural power that is not mine, it's his power, then there's nothing, no matter what it is, I say it in the name of the Lord. Now, who was he speaking to? Moses. Many of you in your Sunday school lessons has read of this great Bible character, Moses. I like him because he was a, a shadow of the, of the coming of Christ. He was just the shadow of Christ's coming. Notice, now when the people of Israel had gone down in Egypt and had come into bondage for 420 years, which he had already told Abraham that they would do, when the time of the promise drew nigh, then I want you to notice how Notice it now, how that when the time of the promise drew nigh, the people began at that time to see that there was something happened to them, some trouble. And God always calls trouble, mostly always, to bring the people together. Did you know that? I believe there will be a time when there won't be any more uh, division amongst the people of God, such as I belong to this church and I belong to that church. I believe the persecution will run all the big ranching churches of God together and will be one in Christ Jesus. And then he'll take her home. Now, we won't argue whether this doctrine is right or that. Now notice, then at the time of the promise through now they raised up a Pharaoh who did not know Joseph and they put burdens upon the people. And the people were so burdened that they could not make the, the bricks and things that they were supposed to. And then, would you think that God would drag his people in that manner? Yes. For the word of God is eternally true. Is that right? And he promised he would deliver them in no other way he had to do it, but this the way. So therefore, at the time of the persecution of Israel, then God had an angel to come down to the earth. But before he had the angel to come, he had a little boy born down there by the name of Moses. Is that correct? And this little boy, Moses, was born rather a peculiar birth. And then at the age of maturity, he was sent out to deliver the children of Israel. For they were in bondage. And God told him before he went now, I'll set my, send my angel before thee. Now, God could have sent the angel down, could he? He could let the angel come itself, but instead of that, he sent the angel to speak to the voice of a man. God always used man for his work. Is that right? He don't use organizations or so forth or mechanical advices, but he uses man. The Holy Spirit fell upon man. That's God's instrument here on earth. He was the first one who had the jurisdiction over everything in the earth. Is that right? Over all the animals. And he lost his, his power. And we're taught in the Bible what the first Adam lost, the second Adam Christ restored again to the human race. Then, friends, if that's so ministers, What's the matter with the church today? That's what I'm saying. If Christ was the missing link between God and man, and he's come to hook God and man together again, what is the matter to this? It's because of unbelief, and you'll start something, and you'll see a little something friction, you say, oh, well, let it go. It was of God. All things work together for good to them that love God. If you're building the house and you say, well, this person just don't fit in here because look where this block is, this big open place here, all that looks, if it move on, keep building the house, God's got another block that'll fit in there, that'll fill that up. The house can't be built like that. So today, while God is moving, let's forget about it and move right out in the spirit of Almighty God and there see the house of God restored again.
Notice. Now, at the day that God was bringing his people together, there arose a great persecution on, on the people, and Moses was sent for a deliverer. He opened the Red Sea, he done all these miracles. They know no more about it than a hot and hot told about a gypsy night. That is right! And even spiritualists in astronomy recognize it before man who claims to even have the Holy Spirit That's true. Any man can say those things. But if God does not testify of it, it's wrong. Is that right? But if God testifies of it, it's the works of God. Is that true? If I come here to preach in the name of a prophet, and I do not the things that a prophet does, then don't believe me. But if I come in the name of the Lord Jesus, in the name of prophecy, and as his servant, and I do the things that is written of his servant, then you believe me. Will you do that? If the deaf don't hear, the dumb don't speak, the blind don't see, the cripples don't walk, if prophecies of sin is before told of people and your sins from the time you was a child foretold, then believe that this angel that come to me is false and I'm false with it. But if it manifests itself here on the platform before you, you believe it and repent of your sins and get free for the hour of his visitation drawing near. That's right. For he only does those things to confirm his word. Look, anyway, before any judgment ever sent to earth, God sends forth and warns the people. That's right. And friends, you listen to my word. If it's in touch with God, one of the greatest judgments that's ever hit all the world is on its road. I remember that. Someday I'll be gone. But you should remember, many of you younger people and some of you older will see that I have told you the truth. That's right. Now, this gift comes by, if you people are afraid and ask for God to send a gift, he sent it. A few months ago, I was here, it was news. But now, no doubt, you're reading newspapers, your magazines, your life, your times, and so forth, and it's heard come around the world. Two nights before I come here in the house, five different nations called in. And the capital of Turkey called him and said, We have heard that the Lord God Almighty has stretched forth his arms to heal in America. Said, Is there any way that we could get a few crumbs? Hunger! Heathen! Call people rise in the name of your Lord. Claim your God-given privilege for the hour is here for you to be healed. That's right, to glorify God and to receive of his spirit and his presence. Cut off of all formalities. Cut off of all this ritualistic religion and come into the realms of a living God who awakens the human soul and brings you into righteousness, into worship of him in the spirit and in the truth. For the hour is come and now is that God has sent forth his morning. Come by vibrations in our hands. The very God that sent his angel before most angels are here. That is right. I've tried to be sincere. And I want you to know this, that I'm made you for morning. I know not. But in the room that night when he came, to you people, it appeared to me many times in the form of a, of a star. I've seen it many times. But when it came visible, there was a man that was seen he would weigh 200 pounds. A little over two years ago now, I was sitting in the room, I was reading a little Scorpio Bible. And I heard something first, I saw a light. And I thought it was an automobile that turned the corner. But it turned that it got brighter and I looked out the door and there was no automobile. Then I heard something coming like this one. Walking. And I looked and the light got greater. And just above me hung a great star. And the light was kind of a, more of a green, between green and yellow, shining on the floor. And coming walking through this light came a man that looked like, as I said before, would weigh 200 pounds. A huge man. He did not have beard over his face like Christ pictured us. Who he is, I do not know. But he had dark shoulders. He had more of an olive complexion. He had dark eyes. He walked as close to me as the microphone is there. Yes, it's true, friends. I couldn't speak. And he said to me, I just sit there. And he said, fear not. I'm sent from the presence of God to tell you that this peculiar life of yours peculiar birth, the gift of divine healing to the peoples of the world. And said, if you'll be sincere and will get the people to believe you, there will be no disease stand before your prayer, not even to cancer. And he said, it'll come to pass that you'll tell the people their diseases from a vibration over your hand. Then, if you will be reverent on, then you'll tell the people the sins of their lives and the things that they have done. 
Dear friends, for the Bible before me this afternoon that has come to pass, I went forth. Now, that's what I question. And I'm not going to ask you right out in the public like that because many of you might put up your hands and you didn't understand. But I believe that there's some of you here, for I know this by the Spirit. I try to pull myself away to say things, talk to you as soon as I possibly could. Notice, in the Spirit now, I feel that there's going to be many, many things happening. Mark, see? Because there's faith that he has. I know a man sitting right in the building right now that's afflicted. I can call that man to this platform and be healed right now. That's right. I know he's here in the building. I feel his spirit is coming from the left side of me. Over here. That is true. I wonder if the little Spanish girl from Sacramento that's sitting in that building that night was sat there and she was sitting way back in the building and she had said within her heart she was Catholic. She said, I can't get to where Brother Brennan is, but if he'll only look at me in the eye, I'll be healed. I know nothing about the girl. She'd been down, to, uh, down farther to Long Beach or somewhere in there with the meeting. I come into service that night, I was preaching. And while I was preaching, I seemed, to, uh, seemed like the face kept pulling it just to my right side. I looked back down and way down through the building. I said, that young lady sitting back so far, tell her to come here. I said, come here, young lady. And I got her testimony. She almost fainted. She said, me, I said, the little round hat on, come here. Walked humbly up. She had, had two burpers. I took her by the hand. I said, you have two burpers low here. But thus saith the Lord. That was all. It was done. The next morning, she re gave her heart to Christ. She was baptized and brought her family. And she to meet me here in Phoenix. I don't know where the girl is. Are you in the building, sister? Anywhere now from Sacramento up there, California? She's to be over here in the Phoenix meeting this time. If you are, raise up. Stand up if you are. I might miss your hand somewhere if you're in the building. A little Spanish girl, I guess about 18, 20 years old, something like that. She's to be here. She'll witness to you this week. That's just one of the things of the hundreds that's taken place. Now I can do the same thing here. And I'll call your attention if this man shall come in the line, because I'm afraid to call him now because it would be conspicuous sound like. I don't have just the premise to call him at this time, but I know he's here. There's a man here who's a perfect stranger, never seen before in my life. Just as death is death can be. That's right. But he's sitting here. If that man is in the building, if that, if that man comes to this prayer line this afternoon and I get to touch him under this anointing that I have now, the man's ears will be perfectly open. Thus saith the law. If that isn't right, then call me a false prophet. I should call him to the platform. If he gives me one more, I'm waiting just a second to see what he says about it. I'll watch and see what I tell you. Now we're going to form the prayer line. Just in a few moments. Now I want you to do this. If there be a modern skeptic in the building, I warn you in the name of the Lord Jesus to do not sit in the building during your time. For cancer, deafness, epileptic, they come from one to another. I'll explain that later. You all understand. How many heard me explain how diseases are germs? And germs are life. You are a germ yourself. You come from the germ of life. Is that right? Well, if you come from your, by your father and mother, a germ of life, a cancer is a germ. A cataract is a germ. A tumor is a germ. Two birthers are a germ. Is that right? Where did they come from? What kind of life are they? The doctors call it. That's medical names saying cancer, cataract, so forth like that. Jesus called them a devil. Is that right? And that's what they are, and anyone knows the devil means a tormentor, and that something is tormenting your body. Now, I want to know that how many believe that God has sent his gift of healing. Now, let's see. God bless you. Oh, my. 85% of the crowd believe. Then, under such as that, I'll assure you to see the glory of Almighty God. Now, remember... While I step out for a word of prayer after having prayer with you here, if, let me give you some advice. For my sake and for your sake, it'll only cause reproach. Remember, 
one thing to this is not a gift to perform miracles. He, the last time he spoke to me was at Vandale, Illinois. Is anybody here from the Vandale meeting was up there at Vandale, Illinois? A person in the building here that was there? When the angel of the Lord came down and said, You are confined, you'll come to pass. I 
Lord Schumann, I come to meet thee in the name of Jesus Christ. This day thou shalt leave him. Come out of him. Almighty and all this is God. Help me here, God. Lord, God may be known to his country. Desire God and I be thy servant. Thou demon, I come to meet thee in the name of Jesus Christ. I surely come out of the town in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. All right, audience, can you raise your hand? As you see my hand, and watch what has been read. I watch turning on. Can you sit, leaving? Can you know the audience sit, leaving? There it is, perfectly normal. Why not a vibrating run to you? Where do you live, lady? Here in Phoenix? Bring it back to Phoenix. Oh, God bless you. We ought to say thank you to Lord, aren't we? Amen. These are things that you don't notice, man. But they're here just the same. They're happy. I'll be ready to keep their heads down. Dear Father, the brothers stand here now on the record. One lady can't be on Satan and Father and Son for this as many conditions. But thou art here to heal. Thou art here to make him well. God is crippled along the long term of the Father, maybe if you didn't get the other land, you might not have heard of God. But God has said it's better to hear him than to of God with one limb or one eye. And he has to hell more. The power now that he has become God's servant has prayed God to live. Satan, leave the man in the name of Jesus Christ.
Minnesota. University of Minnesota. The doctors did him up. There's no hope for him. And she brought him here to Phoenix to be healed. And as certain as I stand on the platform, Almighty God has touched the boy of God. Now listen, my hand is red in place and full of wealth like people on the store. Is that right? Is that the same position my hand lays? Yeah. Did you notice it turned from red and wealthy to white? Did you see that? Or it's white, my hand. Yeah. Little boy, you can return to Minnesota. I'll be your living here normal. No, you can have it.
they bring to God's servants these strange laws. Uh, lay his hands upon their father, and the way that thou hast taught that we should do. And he said, The prayer of faith shall praise the king, and God shall raise him up to thee. And I pray that you'll leave in the name of Jesus Christ. God, I pray for my sister here from California that has a general run down to me. And I pray, Father, that all the things I'm going to do to you. God, here before every one of you, about 2,000 people here, that's the fourth on here. 
I promise God if it was His divine will to perform all these miracles as that you ever want to come before me. Is that right? How many remember He saying that to Amen? And I told Him if it wasn't His will that I would go from here on and would not permit it from this on for anybody to make miracle lines to come in front of this in front of me first. How many hear me say that? Say Amen. And there hasn't been but one person come by here this afternoon, and they were pulled out of the miracle line. Somebody pulled them up out there that was healed of a death spell. Is that right? I've never seen before in my life. Now, by the help of Almighty God, I want no one to bring me anybody to say, heal this person. No more. God has permitted to this day. And how many here has heard me say that the angel of God met me? And Vandale, Illinois, that morning, witnessed before the people, stood there in the big rainbow and mist in the room, standing there before those people, and told me that I was confining too much of this gift of healing to work in miracles. How many members here would say that? All right. I went right ahead just the same because the people were bringing me here to say, you take care of this and that. And I have never in all my life, but this afternoon, seen anything laid before the gift of healing without being healed. But I wanted to be sure that I was doing God's will. It just so happened that today, and God knows that I would be able to never say it. If I come right down and speak to speak for myself, but they are. Them men tell him, come on, go in the house, curse these people, curse these people. It's a, and that last night, I told you, night before last, that the angel of God was standing in the room where I was at. Remember that? That's enough witness for me, people. I don't want no one pulling anybody up and say, heal this and heal that one. Let God witness you. Now that's the truth. Now, next Sunday, we're going to run the line just exactly like we always did. And now look, out of this entire meeting today, and there's been several dead people come by here, and dead people, and then as I call that, these are vibrating. That's right. They leave and they hold up and come back again. It was just so wicked. Now, I want these same deaf and dumb people that were here today come in the line next Sunday just in an ordinary line. Come right into the line just ordinarily. And don't no one, remember, don't no one come to me and ask me to perform any miracle anymore. I, God has permitted up to this time. And every one of you is a witness of it. Is that right? Say amen. He will continue to perform miracles, but not those who bring the miracles. I want to be led of the Spirit of God on what I'm doing from this on, regardless of what Brother Kitty or anybody else says about it. This is enough witness to me and Almighty God. Do you think I'm right? If you do raise your hand. I think I'm right. I think now I'm getting on the line where I can get things straight to that. May Almighty God bless you. Now, bring your, them same people back in the line next we can come through the other line so they can be healed. But don't ever anyone ask me to come here and heal this person and heal that one. I'll let the Holy Ghost tell me to do this by all and do not do that down the road. And now, let's bow our heads while I talk to you just a moment, if you will. Be reverent, man. Don't be irreverent. Be reverent. Father, I thank you today. Paul down has that me to be down very well. I understand now why you're being this and you're living together now. It's a good thing. God, I've been wrong. I've done wrong since the very hour of every day that you've been on the earth. Now, God, you forgive me for the earth and the earth. And from this day to then, as far as I can say, I'll find your little bit of a lot in the earth. And then today we can take the time and see if I can keep everything to track or everything to know about. We told you, or the past few other people, that you would bring everyone back here to do it, that I would continue on and have nothing but an error of mine. But if you did not do the people, then it was a witness that you were going to do the people by letting us have time to do the people. Now, I ain't full of God, you told me to come to class, and they just believe that there was a man. And your word is in me. Almighty God, forgive me for this my sincerity. And I pray that you will be with me now and will help me as I journey from here, from this time 
Then, Father, I shall only go as your spirit leads, or give me God and help me now to go forward to the spirit of the dead, knowing before witnesses of thousands of people here, or hundreds of people here, that you are here and have confirmed your word this day for us all. Grandfather, may next Sunday bring forth the great news, meaning as the gate to the future, or in the past, I mean to say. And then, Father, your great name shall be glorified, for we have been in Jesus' name. I want to know from my audience to see how many of you think that I'm doing that way wrong. Here's what you mean. There's been a fuss and a push to try to get that front line. Is that fine? A fuss and a push and everybody's trying to get From this time, God be my helper. I shall just keep the same line I'm doing up there in my life and in order. Just stand and pray for the people, and they're supposed to be me. And they got so they thought, me while getting them come back, they're a person I didn't even get prayed for, and they went right to the line, because there was a miracle performed. Hundreds of letters poured into my secretary and said, they didn't even pray for me. I went to the bad line. You're supposed to be me, and take God at his word. Now, would you pray for me this weekend for next Sunday? We'll come forth to see the Lord's dear Jesus. God bless you.